In today's video, we will be showing how to build and deploy a small communications network in the Kerbal Space Program 2 using, using this amazing vehicle as a deployer. All in all, the communications network is really important in KSP2 because if you want to build probes and launch probes, you will need connectivity. And when your network on your satellites is on in the shady side of carbon meaning that there is no network coverage you will need some relays and this what you're seeing now in the vab is our first attempt of building that small communications relay that will be able to relay information from the carbon control center all the way via orbit and up to probably somewhere around duna and eve so this at least that's what it says on the range panel. Whether or not it will go to Joule, I have no idea. So this actually here is a small communications relay. Probe, control points, uh, relay antennas, and a few fuel tanks bundled up together with a battery and uh, also the solar panels. Then when we're gonna talk a bigger one, which will be the main relay that will be used for interplanetary travel is the one that I'm building on right now. It has a bigger range antenna. Uh, which will be bouncing signal of the small relays and it has a couple of batteries a couple of monoprop tanks because this one we will be hauling in the cargo bay of the craft of the same craft that will be launching this bad boy so it has a terrier engine to give it a little bit the extra oomph for you know circularizing and whatnot same amount of solar panels same everything except it's a little bit bigger form factor so and i really love the side by side building of the ksp2 because it, as you can see it really gives you a chance to have that you know side by side look comparison and everything else i really think it's it's really cool all right so with that thing being said we have built the short range relay and one long polar range relay so those will be the basis or the backbone of our network. So it's finally time to actually build the deployer craft. And the deployer craft will be an extra large probe. Yeah, you guessed it. So yes, we will take two additional uh, a probe with additional two batteries. We'll slam a big fuel tank on top and then we'll be also putting the uh, cargo bay. So my idea is that here we will have the cargo bay which can actually open and in that cargo bay we will be sporting this uh, medium polar relay. So let me just quickly make sure that at the once we open the cargo bay that at the bottom we will be sporting a decoupler that can decouple this craft and this craft goes in as you can tell. There we go and <clears throat> Then on top, I expand to have a fuel tank and then we will have, where was it, this um, cargo bay door, XL. Yeah, there we go. Something like that. So cargo bay door and the top. And on top, we will be sporting four. So we'll put a quad coupler. And on top of that quad coupler, we will be sporting four of these small satellites that we have just built. So let me put here also the four small decouplers and then we're going to put these satellites one beside the other. So let me just go into four way symmetry to make sure that they are reattached correctly. OK, quick check that nothing is actually clipping inside because when deploying them, that could actually lead to Kraken attacks. I really like this dual mode and this cargo bay really gives me an idea of how to deploy like almost instantaneously a full communications network. I think it's really cool. Okay, so with that thing being said, we now will need some fuel tanks and we're gonna go with extra large fuel tanks. I'm probably gonna stick two of them, uh, probably, or one or two, we'll see. And then at the bottom, we're gonna put the engine plate and we're gonna cram a bunch of engines or actually we could just put in the Mastodon one, that seems enough. Oh yes, and we need reaction wheels. We need reaction wheels to keep the rocket stable, mainly due to the KSPs to, you know, reaction wheels being nerfed. So I'm putting two just to be on the safe side. I'm trying to get some stage info from the uh, Kerbonaut manager, but uh, not much luck, at least some information I was able to get out. But th this vessel will have to, all in all, in the first stage, a 5,000 32 meters per second which would be enough 
uh, if we don't deploy both. So, and also I will be interested to see what it is trust to wait. So then having said that, we need to put some communication antennas just to make sure that even that craft can, you know, do things on its own. And with that things being said, let, let us put the action groups. So action group one will make sure that we take all of our communitron 16s, or actually the first one, and that we can actually toggle it. Second one, we will make sure that we put all the solar panels. So all the gigantor solar panels, if we press two, will be engaged. All right, and then let's see the three will be the communications antennas and literally all of them so i'm just connecting them all willy-nilly so when i press three everything should deploy on the satellites all right i'm still learning this part manager it's a little bit finicky at the moment and it takes a while to load but okay seems to be working okay now let's close the cargo bay doors we can actually toggle the cargo bay doors using the custom group five and now let's close everything up and uh, prepare for the launch so that's the main rocket let me just see engineers report thrust to weight is zero one point zero five nine that's not something that we should be writing home about and actually yeah i forgot the main thing struts I mean, the Kraken is unforgiving in KSP2, so you really do want to put a load of struts. So we are strutting everything that we can. I mean, it's so easy when you're playing KSP1 to forget that struts are really important in KSP2. Yeah. All right. So now we come to an additional set of uh, uh, side boosters. We're going to put two of Clydesdale besides and um, those will be decoupling but they will be firing together with the main engines just to make it ensure that we have that extra oomph that we need to get us going should we go with the kickbacks no i think lysdale will be the order du jour yeah now we're talking 1.5 14 thrust to weight yeah you really need the big guns to actually do something okay let's put in stabilizers stabilizers are more important in ksp2 than in one because nerf reaction wheels kraken attacks and current bugs really do require you to do some extra work okay a small note to myself i need to actually add the struts so strutting everything and making sure that it's strutted saving and let's launch now i'm gonna shut up and let you enjoy the launch Beautiful, isn't it? Just so you know, the game doesn't run that smoothly. This is me accelerating the <laughs> ascent video two and a half times, which gives this a decent and doable frame rate. Yes. All right. So our goal is actually to go in, I think, 100 by 600 orbit. And there we will be starting to deploy our small satellites. And then we're going to change the inclination and hopefully fling the polar satellite, which is the big one satellite that's in the cargo bay, into some sort of polar orbit. It doesn't really matter for your first network. You have to have it deployed so that it works. If you can make it perfect in KSP2, well, then you're a better player than I am. All right. So that being said, we are reducing our thrust to weight just to make sure that it's not too steep. And we are going with a steeper ascent profile just to make sure that Kraken doesn't hit us and we start flipping all willy nilly. And at this point, the rocket started to almost lose control a little bit. Fortunately enough, Apoapsis was closing. So it was becoming harder and harder to control, as you can tell. Fortunately, yeah, Apoapsis is 100, which means I could turn off the engine and be none the wiser. So we will just glide to the Apoapsis and then we will be performing the circularization. Let's create a maneuver node. All right, uh, 
and that will put us to projected apoapsis and periapsis. I really love the microengineer and maneuver node controller. They help me out, iron out, and I, in my opinion, the maneuver node controller and the microengineer should have been in the game stock. So devs, if you're looking at this, please add them because really need, we really need this information. All right, so the start of the burn will be happening in some 30-ish seconds. And I just love how the music changes to, you know, exciting one. Something is about to happen. Which is here sadly garbled because it's a two and a half times time acceleration, of course. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, and ignition. This is a very, very low part count rocket, and I was counting on that to keep the frame rate manageable. I think overall it has, I think, around 60-ish parts on ascent, and, uh, or 80 parts on ascent, and a little bit less, I think, around 37 or 40 when you're actually in the orbit, so frame rates were pretty decent i didn't have it as a powerpoint presentation and this note guys that this is pre-patch and we're supposed to get the patch on thursday but you never know if that is gonna drag on but this is a pre-patch so i'm hoping that the performance post patch will be significantly better i'll test and i'll let you know anyway there we go we are going orbital which is beautiful and our epoapsis is 80 by 530 not too bad so not something that i plan but obviously will it will work itself out okay so i'm gonna thrust a little bit more to get us is around 640 ish mark that's uh, something what i consider to be optimum for this payload and sorry for a little bit of a flickering and changing the view because obviously it didn't want to collaborate. I'm trying to change to Celestial. Now let's open the cargo bay and we're gonna open this cargo bay because I forgot that it's grouped on the group level five. All right, so let's start and talk deployment of the smaller satellites, shall we? We have four to deploy and uh, I'm not going to make them in the perfect, you know, square, but I will deploy them in the decent orbit and making sure that their period is synced. So that means that the orbital period has to be exact. And that will keep them relative to one another in a decent orientation. So let's decouple the first one. Then we want to switch to it double by double clicking. Thank you in my commenters for that. So let's extend the antenna and we can extend the solar panels and uh, there we go, antenna extended and the solar panels are going out and it's time that we point maneuver prograde. Let me just engage the ion engine a little bit to get out of this debris field. And look at it go. Oh, I might make this even for a screenshot for the episode. What do you think guys? Relays about to be deployed. Alright, so at the apoapsis for this graph we want to make it the maneuver node and we want to circularize to 640 by 640-ish. One thing that I'm not seeing here, which could be also handy, would be like a remote tech flight computer or something like that, but I guess that will be coming maybe in the coming features. I don't know, it's just my speculation because it sounds like a good idea. At least it does in my head. All right. There's a maneuver node and our maneuver node will be in 23 minutes. I'm just making sure that we're pointing maneuver prograde and then we will be accelerating to get towards the maneuver. Skipping the time. I really love how the KSP2 graphics looks. This is just amazing. Devs, just please increase the performance and we will be golden and fix the bugs, obviously. All right, so the burn will be two minutes and uh, seven seconds. Oh, you know what? We could try the time acceleration under warp. What do you think? Maybe it would be actually quite good. Let's try. Let's go to three. Huh, 
What do you know? It works. Nice. Well, thank you. Okay, 20 seconds. And now, since we are no longer in the sunlight, we are consuming our electric charge. Let me just hope that it will suffice. Okay, and oh, and oh, we did go a little bit overboard 655 by 672. Let's just take it a tad back so that we are at least 650 by 650. Okay, okay, I'm happy with that orbit. And guys, let me know is there a way where you can rename your craft so it's not a default name something from here at least. I'm trying, I was trying to actually look it up and normally here where you have the control enabled you would have the capability to rename it but for some reason I don't see it. Do let me know in the comments below if you know where we can change the craft name. Okay, so let's switch to the small equatorial relay mark 2. Let's control it. All right, and rinse repeat so now what we're gonna do we're gonna perform another circle around the sun and hopefully we're gonna be deploying number two and there's a weird bug with the orbital debris going into elliptical orbit and dumping down i'm guessing it's because it's of a lack of control but i'm not exact during warp i'm not sure warp does invoke kraken apparently or apollo or whoever there we go let's take the second we prepare everything, decouple, and let's double click to make sure that we control the craft. There we go. And extending the antennas, kicking a little bit of the iron drive so to get out of the debris field. And there we go. Deployment confirmed. Okay, so now we should engage the SAS. And once again, our goal is to match the apoapsis and the periapsis to somewhat degree but our main focus is to match the orbital period which was one minute eight what 18 sorry one hour 18 minutes and 26 seconds that's the time it takes uh, to go a full circle around the carbon so there we go and our maneuver node will be coming in three minutes and 15 seconds and i am a little bit worried because it's a big burn so we won't have the benefits of electric charge so we might need to do it in multiple successive burns all right and let's do the second burn throttle is locked okay so starting up and let's accelerate time by a little bit yeah clearly we won't be able to make a full burn we'll run out of electric charge right about now oh page get out of here i know what i'm doing i am the tutorial i don't need the tutorial as scott manley said fully agree on that one okay so we'll just move this one by one orbit plus and that's not something and look at this at this point the Kraken has decided to strike because I accelerated everything. My deployer went on a highly elliptical trajectory that it's going to end up in a suborbital crash on Kerbin. I'm going to fix that in just a second, but first let us do this maneuver burn. It's really unfortunate that I have to spend the Delta V required to get us places for combating whatever kraken throw our way but i'm determined i'm gonna de deploy this network and nothing will stop me not even kraken i just hope i didn't jinx myself saying that all right so another periaps is being raised and now i'm trying to go and match the period at this point i no longer care about the apoapsis and periapsis I'm just matching, okay, one hour, eight minutes, 18 minutes and 26 seconds, exactly, good, really important. Okay, now let's take a look at this deployer. So Kraken has flung it into the two and three kilometer orbit for some reason with periapsis of minus 100. So let me just quickly correct that. Apoapsis, we put it to 100 and then when we, once we get at periapsis, we're going to reduce our apoapsis to once again 650. 
This additional footage was brought to you by Kraken Industries, courtesy of the common bugs deployed as, the, you know, as at the early access release. <laughs> Alright, let's actually put it to good use. While we're in a highly elliptical orbit, we want to actually fling out the polar satellite. Alright, we use RCS to get it out of the docking, or actually out of the cargo bay. Looks really beautiful, so might as well take a, you know, selfie. All right, snap it, son. Now, at the apoapsis, we're gonna actually burn orbit normal to actually put ourselves into highly inclined orbit. And we have 1,141 meters per second, and that would be more than enough. Right, the burn should be in 30 seconds. We really don't need to wait. We're closer to the apoapsis. Just set it up and burn willy-nilly. All right, there we go. And well, well, it does. Like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect, but might as well burn it until we get to a very nice orbit. All right, highly elliptical. I don't see why not. Now, we need to go back to the small equatorial relay and we have two more to launch. By now you get the principle. At this point, correct the Kraken's attack, lower our periapsis to 655-ish, and then we'll be performing another deploy. So, let us warp to the maneuver. There we go, 40 seconds away. Let's close the cargo bay. That one has served its purpose. And then we will be performing the burn. All right, beautiful. Okay, so we need to deploy the third satellite. So, and the, on the plus side, these ones are gonna be burning at the good side of Kerbin, so to say, when we will have plenty of sunlight, so we will no longer have problems with running out of electric charge. All right, and let's put maneuver prograde and let's warp to the maneuver. There we go, beautiful. Okay, time to set up the burn and I think we should do probably one more orbit. Yeah, because we were too close and look at this our deployer once again was attacked by kraken you don't say so what we're gonna do now we are gonna be burning to circularize this and then we'll need to do an additional fix devs please fix your game there we go it's a big burn. We might as well actually hit the time accelerator, hit the pedal to the metal on this one. So we should be stopping the burn in one minute and 32 seconds. Okay, point maneuver prograde and let us just watch at this point. Like I said, we don't care about the apoapsis and periapsis, but more about the orbital period. It should be one hour, 18 minutes and 20 seconds, 26 seconds exactly. And that's the good thing with these ion engines. They're so low thrust that you can really boil it down to a single second precision. 118 and 26, perfect. There we go, another one deployed. And as you can tell, these are almost equally spaced. Well, not 100%, but it will work. So once again, need to correct the Kraken's mistakes and then we will be deploying our fourth and the last satellite. So you see guys, one deployer can actually deploy your entire network because, well, you know, efficiency. That's how we like to roll. All right, so final one, we have the periapsis set to 100-ish and then the apoapsis we're gonna reduce once again to 655, 640-ish, good. And then we're going to be pointing a maneuver prograde and we might as well accelerate it. Here I'm not going to accelerate warp to maneuver node because at this point we want to do the burn 373. We should have enough delta V even to combat the Kraken. All right, so in 15 seconds we're going to do the burn and let's hit it. 
Right, Apoapsis is around 640 ish something. Good. So let's deploy the last and uh, but not least satellite. I think it's actually best that we do it in the sunlight. I'm actually now warping multiple orbits because I don't want our uh satellites to be too close so yeah okay making sure that we can actually uncouple let's decouple this guy and it was flung somewhere what oh look at it go velocity 4000 meters per second oh well i'll do it just in the next one thanks for watching bye